K Emphasis provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com. In our previous applications and previous sessions, we have spoken something about arithmetic exception, right? So whenever you divide anything divided by zero, it is basically an arithmetic exception. So here, uh, let us add 27. Okay, so 27 and 27. Okay, I'm adding 27 right now. And uh, what am I doing is, uh, I just said execute update. After doing an execute update, I am going to manually add some bugs to my program during runtime. So what happens? This will never get committed. Ultimately, it is going to go come to the catch block. In the catch block, I have got something like connection dot rollback. Okay, so this with the help of this, I'm basically controlling the transaction. So when you say transaction, it is something like whenever you take out money from your uh, ATM, then only the uh, your your money gets uh, subtracted right from from your uh, from your account even anything goes wrong it doesn't get subtracted so the same thing if i have any flaws in my in my flow i come back and do a rollback here okay so if i right click run as java application so something went wrong so if i just go and query the database right now okay i should still see 28 the existing value which i have it i do not i will not see as 27 at all Okay, so for that reason, you just say uh, roll back here. Okay, so with this, uh, these methods, roll back and commit, you can basically control the transaction. All right, so in real time application, also you do the same, but as in real time these days, everybody are using some kind of ORM tools, you will not go and do that. Okay, um, All right, so there are a couple of other APIs. So with the help of that, you can basically do a save point. Uh, let's say control V, control V. Okay, so here, what am I trying to do here is, uh, in database concept, there is a save point. Basically, you add a save point after each and every execution. You can even uh, add a save point out here. So save point is uh, something like, uh, okay. You want to do an insert, you you want to do an insert first, okay, and then you execute that query, and after that you add a save point to it. So I, before even that, I have added a save point, and I execute some query, and uh, I I executed that, I created one more save point, I executed one more query out here, right? So if anything goes wrong, I want to basically roll back a save point. I If I say uh, roll back here, so let us just execute this program for now, and see that. So here at this point of time, I've got uh, two values, 106 and 107. The name is data six and data seven. Okay, so everything goes fine. I just execute this program. So right click run as Java application. So everything went fine for sure. Uh, let me go and just execute this particular table. So I see 106 and 107. Okay, but let's say, let us put some bugs in our code. Okay, so right now I'm just going to make this as 102 and 103. So I can even have two queries at the same time. So this is your two and this is your three. So what I'm saying is uh, create a save point if anything goes wrong. So I'm just manually adding some bugs to it. If anything goes wrong, you go and roll back your save point two. That means do not, uh, okay, first we'll do one thing. We will not put any save points here. Okay, and we will just say roll back. That's all. Okay, we'll just do a roll back out here. We'll not do roll back, uh, we'll not say uh, any save point. So let us see this first and then we'll talk about the other things. So when I say roll back, I know that uh, 102 or 103 will not get inserted to the database run as Java application. 
So some error uh, went in and it says rolling back, right? So something went wrong, okay? So you can see those information in your loggers, okay? Now let us go back and see the database, uh, whether you have 103 and 104, it is not there, okay? Now what am I going to do is, I don't want to, whenever there is an issue, I want to basically roll back to a particular save point. Okay, so for that reason, let me have this invoked and this commented out. Now, let us do the, let us run the same application again. So when I run this application, this gets inserted, uh, this gets executed, and this gets insert, uh, this gets uh, executed, this gets inserted, but I do a rollback on save point two. So that means your this insertion will not happen basically. Okay, so right click, run as, Java application, there was some error for sure. Let us go back to the database and select start from. Okay. Now if you see 102 got inserted, but 103 got rolled back. Why? Because I have done a rollback on a save point two, not save point one. I can even do the same thing. So save point is nothing but if uh, you know you have done some important uh, transaction here, but you don't want to uh, roll back those transactions, you want to roll back from a, from a particular point. So I want to roll back from a, from this point, okay? So I think uh, for, for the database folks, uh, it is pretty much easy uh, for them to uh, understand. Uh, mm -hmm. Jairam, yeah. one quick question. On save point one, you didn't issue any comment. Yeah, that's what. So here we have auto, uh, we, whenever the execution happens. Oh, you set auto commit, I see. Okay. I see. No, I mean, even though once your execution happens, when you do a ro rollback on a particular uh, statement, so that means you're rolling back that particular statement, okay? And then you commit, auto commit happens automatically. Right. Okay. Now, even you have an option to add a batch also. So what is the add, uh, what is add, add batch here? So suppose you have multiple statements, the way if you see in our previous application, uh, we have uh, given SQL and we have given SQL two times, right? So we have to, told execute update and execute update two times. But when you say execute update two times, what happens basically is the, the execution and the, uh, it gets triggered two times, okay? So there is a basically a network hit two times, okay? Now we are going to basically stop that and we are going to use a batch operation there. So when you talk about batch operation, you create all your queries at one time, okay? Create all your queries, and then in a single shot itself, execute all the queries. So how do you do that? You create a query one, add it to the batch, okay? It's from the statement dot add batch. You create one more query, add batch, add it to the batch. It is something like adding it to the collection, and say add batch, okay? So I added three queries to, let's say this is your one not, so I added three statements in one batch and at last I'm going to say statement dot execute batch. Okay. So when I say statement dot execute batch, all the three, the three things are going to execute it at one time in the database itself. So if I run this, okay. So how many uh, queries got executed? You're going to get the count out here. If you go to the database. So you had the uh, one not uh, two as Rita, now it is Raja. And other things got added to the database. Okay, so you inserted two tables, two rows, and apart from that, you just updated something out here. Okay. Any questions, folks? Uh, these are all, I mean, okay. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Jayram, when you uh, execute, uh, execute these separate um, SQL statements on the database side, if you were to see, uh, will they be executed all at one or one after the other? Like what I mean is, like, would that be part of the same program? Um, the first SQL statement gets executed and then the results displayed? Or all three get executed first, and then the results display. All the three are executed, and then the results are displayed. Okay, it gets executed in the database itself. See, nothing. These all statements are not been executed in your Java application. You're just using some APIs to execute that 
but ultimately these all statement goes to the database and from your database itself these statements gets, gets executed okay because these are all sql statements or sql queries okay so you, it is you are just a driver okay you are just a uh, a message holder or so it's just a guy who is actually passing this information to the database so it is the database responsibility to execute all the programs out there and give you the result back okay so how does it com commit like you, you have the set auto commit equal to false mm -hmm. uh, where have you defined the commit statements here yeah so when you say auto commit false and when your execution happens automatically it commits the statement okay see if you if you know your sql and uh, in your sql also you can say auto commit as false or in your oracle database you see auto commit as false but if you remember if you do any kind of your ddl statements next to next okay uh, so if suppose you say select star from employees sorry if you want to insert something and you want to roll back you can even do a roll back also right but if after you have an option in your SQL that when you say auto commit as false, it doesn't basically auto commit. But in the meantime, if you do any of your DML commands, it basically auto commits your statement. Okay, the same thing goes here. If you want, you can even say auto commit as false. But after your execution finish, if you do not do anything, it basically commits your statement. Okay. These statements are not committed yet. That's what you're saying. Yeah. These are committed, right? These are all committed. If anything, see, when you open a connection, you close a connection. In between, anything goes wrong, you are basically rolling it back. Okay? So if you know that, once you commit a statement, you can roll it back. The same thing goes for your SQL statements also. Correct? Right? So if you suppose, if I insert, say insert into so and so, copy this and paste it out here. Okay, so if I say 110. Okay, now one row got inserted, correct? It says one row got inserted. If I say roll back here, Rollback completed, right? So if I say select star from H2K table, you do not see the information about 1110, correct? So the same thing happens here. If suppose you uh, do any insertion, okay, and you have one more, uh, some DML statements and stuff, automatically it commits the statement. Why you use add batch? Can we not execute it in a more direct fashion? You can execute in a more direct fashion, uh, Adil, but uh, you have to execute all these statements one by one. So extra, it's an extra headache. Now, what you do is you put everything in a collection and uh, an add batch, and at the same time, you just go and talk to the database and execute all the statement in your database itself. Okay. Yeah. So coming on to the uh, auto commit uh, functionality here, if. Jerem, if. Uh... Yeah. Uh, you can go ahead and finish okay so when you talk about your auto commit uh, functionality out here i'm just saying you have an option here it, that means do not commit it if anything goes wrong you can even roll back uh, or you can do uh, even though if you do not add a commit okay so you at the end of the session it basically commits it okay but usually when uh, everything goes fine you basically say connection dot commit yeah go ahead uh, Jaram, the return type of the method execute batch mm -hmm. is what? The number is of it's an integer. Num no, yeah, it is an integer. Okay. Integer and it is like a standard thing that it will be. It will be the in the form of an array. It is in the form of an array. All right. Okay. Thank you. Hey folks, so I'm going to check in this file and uh, I hope you guys create your own statements and execute all the all the APIs. Okay, and there are a lot of other APIs you can even create your own and uh, but these are the basic things which uh, is very important to understand. Okay, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to check in this and uh, folks, any questions?
Uh, yeah, Jaron with uh, Jada. hibernates. Uh, yep, he's ahead. Uh, uh, a lever. Yep, ladies first. Good. <laughs> okay, Jaron, I have seen uh, Java DB. Mm -hmm. um, is that a good idea to use that, which which says it has the integrated, uh, you know, um, embedded SQL that you can use for Java? Will that help instead of going for personal Oracle and installing all that? Uh, you can have use. You use I have I have not used Java DB, but you can very well go and use that. Okay, there are a lot of databases. I've used MySQL. I've used DB2. I've used Oracle uh, as well. So you're free to use anything, but it's all the same. Okay, so you just need to have some drivers, you need to have some connection URL. So those things you have to search it in the internet and uh, find out what all things you need to use it. Okay. And the queries, if you want, um, I'm not sure about the Java DB queries. So for Oracle, you have this, something like this for uh, DB2 also, you have something like this, but I'm really not sure about your Java DB. Okay. So you, those things you can even find out and you can. Um, um, yeah, because in my uh, company, they, mm -hmm. um, they are asking, you know, some of the Java folks to uh, use Java DB. Okay. So, do you think the companies are introducing this? Uh, Java or... DB is it's actually a, a DB which is given by the Java folks itself. It is it's an in-memory database, I believe, right? So, you so pretty, right. It is an in in in-memory database, right? Yes, it has its own, you know, you can directly do the embedded. But I'm thinking, is that like because Oracle also, you know, part of it is Oracle, of course, is uh, no, ja that. Uh, Java the DB... SQL is same? Mm -hmm. Yes, SQL, yeah, no, okay. I'm pretty much not sure. I'm sorry for that, but I can oh, okay, I can okay. get you those information because I've not worked on that, okay? Uh, yeah, but yeah. it should be pretty much same, okay? The, no other differences so it should be same. The, but yeah, I okay. think Java DB is an in-memory database. Okay, so when I say in memory yeah. database to all the folks, it is something uh, the database you created uh, virtually in, in the memory itself. Once you shut down your system, your memory is gone, your everything is gone. But when you talk about your relational, relational database or uh, any kind of databases, you can still store the information down the line after one year also, you can come back and access it. Okay, so there's a difference between your in memory and uh, your relational database. Okay, and uh, folks, I would. Uh, uh, Request you guys, please uh, feed, uh, give some feedbacks. Okay, fill in this feedback form. Okay, one request. And the other concern, uh, we will be starting the advanced Java courses. So we'll be talking about uh, the JSP servlets and we, we are going to move on from here. Okay, and we are not going to uh, start up tomorrow because uh, I want to do a fresh startup. So this is a long weekend, so we will see everyone on Tuesday itself. I hope everybody will be having their own uh, uh, outing and a, a, some kind of plans for this long weekend. So have a nice long weekend, and we'll we'll meet on Tuesday. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, before... yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I just one question: Is there any books you can recommend us for? Uh... Uh, advanced uh, Java that would cover Hibernate and uh, GSP and servlets. And... For servlets and GSP, uh, you can use your head first. Okay, so head first has got all. It has got its own core Java. It has got its own uh, GSP servlets. Okay, so you just go with that. They have clearly and very beautifully explained everything. Okay, so from my session, you can basically get uh, the the sense of it and if you want to really understand a lot of other things you can just go and use that okay he had first had got its own core java it has its own advanced java and for hibernate uh, you can use your hibernate in action okay uh, hibernate in action and uh, yeah you can use these things what will be the next topic so next topic is going to be the servlet uh jera yeah. one quick question um we uh, ours is a product that we're converting into Java stuff. Like mm -hmm. uh, we uh, we support uh, two databases, okay. SQL Server and Oracle. Mm -hmm. um, for Oracle, uh, sorry, for SQL Server, um, uh, we're planning to use JTDS. Mm -hmm. I have no clue, but uh, uh, is, is it a good one for a SQL Server, or is, 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 do you recommend something else? Uh, JTDS for what? 
uh, for SQL Server? No, first let me just find out what is JTDS you're talking about. Uh, JTDS is a, um, a source for job, a free available driver for SQL Okay, Server. okay, okay. So this is a driver, right? Yeah. Okay. So, no, see, driver again, it all depends uh, <laughs> what driver your MySQL server is giving you. So if they're recommending this one, you can very well use it. See, using drivers will not make any difference out here, okay? Oh, okay. So you, there'll, there'll be only one specific driver. There won't be multiple drivers of the same kind, okay? Mm. So again, the drivers are all uh, implement. I think JTDS is an open source, 100% pure Java type four driver. Okay, it's a JDBC 3.0 drivers for my. See, this is your for my SQL my SQL server in specific. Okay. Right. So I mean, there is no other option here to use this itself, right? Right. So from your Java application, I see. As I have not used the my SQL server, okay. Uh, so uh, I have so this not. Microsoft SQL. Server. Right. So, yeah, it's a Microsoft Excel server. For that reason, you need to use your JTDS. So there is no other go. For MySQL, for Oracle, I need to use my OJDBC, right? For MySQL, for MySQL servers, I need to use uh, MySQL uh, jar files. For Microsoft SQL server, you are, you are supposed to use this. There is no other go. You, uh, you are bound to use this. Okay. I see. Did that answer your question, by the way? Okay, so what do we need to install for servlets? Please email us all the details. Uh, I'll tell you all this information in that particular class, Rashmi. So, uh, but again, just to give you a heads up, we can install. We are supposed to install Tomcat server for this. Okay. Any questions, folks? If there are no questions, have a nice weekend and. Uh, Jaram, I hope I didn't miss it. Uh, the next class is on Tuesday. No class tomorrow. No class tomorrow. So it's on Tuesday again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Because I don't want to get scoldings from you guys to have class on tomorrow and again on Monday. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys. Uh, have a nice weekend and have a long weekend as well. Bye bye.